Uh, my name is Colin Monroe. I'm originally from a small town outside of Ottawa. I'm a writer, I produce, I perform all the instruments on all the recordings that I do. I grew up homeschooled with a, a family and a bunch of instruments around me, and that was my way to, to kind of get out of it. First coming to Toronto was a bit of a culture shock. This was suddenly the world getting really big, really fast. I was 18. I didn't really know what was going on. That I had no idea what I was doing. I just kind of moved to the city and was met with this giant population with all of these musicians and all of this music and really had no idea how to get into it. My first night at Revival would have been coming with a friend of mine named Cesaro. He said, you know what, there's this jam that's going on, there's these incredible players. You should just come and meet people and see this talent. Well, Revival at that time was a real kind of hub of activity for musicians and artists to go and showcase their abilities. And so that's where I would come, you know, sort of made a few friends, never got up on stage myself in those years, but just watched this talent and met these guys. You'd hear Glenn Lewis, Divine Brown, Carlos Morgan, you'd hear Ray Robinson. And these guys were the top talent. And, you know, because Canada doesn't really have a big urban stage, you could just come and see them like at open mics, killing it vocally or getting up there and just tearing it to pieces on their instrument. Notes packed into spaces far too small, you know, and like the speed at which they tear through these riffs, you know, they were competing with each other, um, trying to outdo each other, who could riff faster, who could go higher, who could, you know, show the greater range. And it was hilarious. People would just erupt into laughter. I may not necessarily, you know, be from your particular scene or whatever, but look, I I'm musical, I can make music, I can do these different things. And I guess some people just took to it. The whole role of producer and being able to make music for someone else was just kind of my offering to any musical community that would take me. And that's all really that I was asking for. The transition to artist wasn't a transition so much as it was a return, because that's how I originally started, was writing songs for myself. I didn't actually make it onto this revival stage until I was asked to come and jump on stage with an MC from Detroit by the name of Black Milk. It was actually quite strange to kind of be here in the green room where I'd never been before. And then doing that again with Socrates. So yeah, revival is, is, a, is a major staple in, uh, in getting independence heard. It was like a real necessary, you know, like heart pumping blood through the lives of everyone that was trying to make it, you know? I was drawn in to Colin in the first place because his beats were so funky and loose, very uh, JD influenced from Slum Village in Detroit, and him just fusing it all together. Oh, you don't really hear that done well. Colin just does it naturally. Plus, I mean, he, he, you know, he's a white boy, you know, and he was doing this funky music, and it was just like, wow, where's all of this coming from? Getting up on stage and working with him was really kind of you know, my homecoming to revival. Never how I thought it would happen, but you know, kind of a nice bookend to that chapter. Maybe it's the fact of the way I was raised on my bed in my room till I reached ninth grade.